Hello dear friends, so here we are once again in Shiksha Mantra discussion session and where we were, we were uh, discussing about uh, sentence diagramming and we have already discussed the part 1 and part 2 for sentence diagramming and today we would learn sentence diagramming in the part 3 of this series. So let's recap what we have already discussed. In part 2, we have discussed about simple diagramming and in part 1, we have discussed about simple diagramming and in part 2, we have discussed diagramming of subjects in a sentence of different subjects uh, simple subjects compound subjects three subjects etc etc so what comes in english grammar when you consider of a sentence after subject which one is the most important factor that is the object of a sentence and we also get for object two different types direct object and indirect object that's why in the third part of our discussion of sentence diagramming we are going to discuss different objects and how we diagram the sentences with objects direct and indirect so that would be the third part of our video we are learning about the diagramming of direct and indirect objects so let's begin so there we were discussing about simple subjects and today we would discuss about simple direct objects. Yes dear friends, direct objects but simple direct objects. So before we start discussing this uh, diagramming of this sentence, first read the sentence. It says Priti sent email. Now if we consider Priti sent email three different parts and sent what sent email so when we ask the word with what we get the answer email that's why this is a direct object there's no confusion if you haven't uh, uh, actually uh, find out how it's a direct object i have a video already prepared in this channel and i would put the uh, link in the i button so you can check it there and it, you would also find this in the description and besides this you would get the first part and the second part their link in the description below and also in the i button so you can check them if you are a newcomer in this video and you, if you haven't uh, find out what i have already prepared so let's begin this is the direct object so how we place this in sentence diagram here you must remember that for each and every part of sentence diagramming you'd get this skeleton in a different manner we have already told you that this is the skeleton of a sentence so how do we place the formation of sentences with direct object if you consider here we have placed priti and what is priti priti is the subject of the sentence then comes the verb sent and then comes the object that is the direct object email so this is how we place a direct object in its skeleton or in its sentence diagramming format that's very easy just remember this format for each and every types of sentences i have discussed about all the grammar components for sentence diagramming and there i would show you how to place them into that skeleton how to create that skeleton so this is the first type with the direct objects here you have to make three cells one for the subject second for the verb and third for the direct objects so this is the seventh rules of our sentence diagramming and now it's shift to the eighth rules so here we are with the eighth rules and what is the eighth rules of this diagramming it says compound direct objects so we have learned of simple direct objects now we'd learn compound direct objects but before we start learning this we have to read the sentence what is it priti sent cards and email 
Now, if you consider, you would find the same structure that we have learnt in 7. So, here also comes subject and verb, pretty sent. Then comes pretty sent what? Pretty sent two things, cards, emails and it is conjugated with and. So, it is a compound direct object. It is compound because of the conjunction and here we have two direct objects. So, this is compound direct objects and to cage this into our sentence diagramming what structure would follow that would be the skeleton you have uh, learnt it uh, already uh, in the first part of this video there we have shown how compound direct subject uh, object and compound subjects can be conjugated together blah 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 so there it is uh, written like this so what is there this is the subject prithi then comes the verb sent and now there is two direct objects cards this is one direct objects and email this is another direct objects and these two direct objects are conjugated with the conjunction and so that's how we find the diagramming of the eighth rules of this discussion and that is what that is compound direct objects so remember these frames these frames are really vital these frames actually show the logic behind each and every sentence. I am repeating this for so very different occasions, for so many times, not to make you bore, but to make you understand, but to make you feel what is the life of sentence diagramming, what is the essence of English grammar. This is what the most important factor the logical caging, the logical balance, the logical relationships of different components of each and every component that has been used in a sentence and that is in sentence diagramming. So when we have completed the eighth rules, now it shift to the ninth rules of this session. So let's proceed. So here comes the ninth rules. What is this? Three direct objects. Yes, dear friends, we have already handled three direct subjects did in the second part of this discussion and in the third part we have three direct objects and you know how to handle this. So first read the sentence. Prithi sent email, cards and letter. So three sub objects are there email, cards and letters. So how will we cage it? How will we uh, put them into our sentence diagramming? That is how we would put this Prithi, subject, sent, verb and then comes the three direct objects email, cards, letters conjugated with and. So that is how we would put the three different objects into a single frame. But here this class is very much important because it would show that these are the objects for this verb. Okay? So you have to put this slash. This class is very much important. Got it? So this is how we discuss about the sentence in a caging format logically and that is the sentence diagramming for three direct objects and now we shift to the tenth rules. So here is the tenth rules and it says compound predicate with direct objects. Predicate can also be compound. It is not that every time you would get a compound subject or a compound object. Sometimes you would get a compound predicate as well. So what we will do? when we get a compound predicate object. So let's uh, read the sentence first. Ricky cooked breakfast and ate it. Ricky cooked breakfast and ate it. Now if you look at the sentence quite keenly, you would find that we have two different predicates. Cooked breakfast, ate it and this is joined with and a conjunction. So this is obviously a compound predicate with what direct objects cooked what breakfast ate what eat. So this direct object It's a compound predicate with direct objects. That's the logic behind the sentence. Now we would have to put it logically into our sentence diagram. So how will we do this? 
would put the subject to Ricky. There comes the slash and then the verb or the predicate part. The predicate part is there with the verb cooked and the direct object breakfast with the verb ate and the direct object eat. And when we have caged these two predicates, they are also conjugated. They are also joined with and. So, we would put and here and we would get the skeleton of the sentence and also its diagram. So, that is how we handle these sentences in diagramming and that is the 10th rules. Now, we would shift to the next one that is the 11th rule. So, there we are in the 11th rules of our discussion and what it says, it says compound predicate with one direct object. So, here we have compound predicate but just like the other occasions, we will not have two different objects rather we will have one object here. So, two predicates with one object and how do we catch it? Before going to that caging, before going to that logical diagramming, we would read the sentence first. Samina writes and recites her poems. So, Samina writes and recites her poems. Here, if you consider this sentence, you would get that we have two verbs, writes and recites. And we have one object that is her poem. So, we have one direct object, her poems. But we have two verbs, writes and recites. So, here when we find the logic behind this sentence, obviously we would put shamina, then a slash for the verb and we have put the verbs writes and recites. They are connected with and. So, we have used and here. So, we got this one till this part of this sentence. So, here we have to separate this part. So, we have made what? We have made the subject and the verb, then comes the object that is the poem. Poem is the object, so we have put it here and there is a qualifier her. So, this possessive adjectives has also been put here. So, that is how we would cage sentences with compound predicate with one direct object. Aren't the structures very much interesting? Yes, dear friends, once you have found out the logic behind the sentence, it actually needs nothing to cage them into diagram. It's so very easy. The lines that and the patterns that we are forming here, these are all very logical. Once you find out the logic, when you grab the logic, you don't find anything tough here. Everything is very simple. Everything is very easy. Only what you have to remember. You have to remember what mark we put and how we frame each and every sentence. That's it. So, let's shift to the next rules that is the 12th rules of our discussion. So, we have already completed our discussion of direct object and now we are there in our discussion of indirect objects. Yes, dear friends, for the English sentences, direct objects are valuable and so are the indirect objects. So, when you face an indirect object in a sentence, what would be your strategy for sentence diagramming? Which logic will you use there and how would be its formation? How would be its skeleton? So, there is the example, but before shifting to this, we have to read the sentence first. The teacher gave the children homework. Now, if you consider this sentence, the teacher, that is the subject gave and then you would find homework. This is the direct object and the children, this is the indirect object. So, gave what? Homework, direct object, gave whom? Children, the indirect object. So, we have here the sentence and now we would cage them, now we would diagram them. So, what would be the diagram? The diagramming would be like this for the subject. What we have? We have teacher and before the teacher, there is the. So, teacher, the, the teacher. We have completed the subject. Then comes the verb and the verb is give. 
so we have put the verb in the second segment and there with the verb we get what we get the direct object homework just consider this if you uh, have the teacher gave homework so if we consider this part this is the indirect object so it has also the relation of uh, with the verb so from the verb we have drawn it drawn the pattern children and it's related to the so the children that is the indirect object so that's how we put an indirect object in a sentence diagram you have to remember this for sentence diagramming the placement of indirect object would be like this so things are gradually getting complicated still we are so far from saying that sentence diagram is a complicated task it's not like this it's, it's very simple only you have to find out the logic i'm repeating the same thing once again find out the logic and plus them you'd get everything so let's shift to the 13th rules and also this is the last rules for our discussion today so let's shift and uh, uh, observe what's waiting there for us in our discussion of the object seg segment of sentence diagramming so let's proceed so here we are with the 13th rules for our discussion of sentence diagramming regarding objects and it says compound indirect objects yes dear friends it's compound indirect objects if direct objects can be com compound why not the indirect objects they can also be compound and here you must learn how to handle those compound indirect objects so let's learn how to do this it's very much interesting read the sentence parts teacher gave tithi and tithli homework now if you consider this sentence you'd get that there's two indirect objects tithi and tithli and there's one direct object that is homework now we have to find out what logic is there and how to put them logically in our sentence diagramming the subject to just like this teacher then comes the verb give then comes the direct object homework yes dear friends those three things subject verb and direct object they would be in one line in three different segments so we first do them we first put them in the cages subject verb and objects then comes the indirect objects and indirect objects are also related to the verb so from there we draw an extra hand and there we cage tithi tithli connected with and the same things that we have done for the subjects compound subjects for the compound direct objects the same thing would also be there for the compound indirect objects there the same cage would be formed but that would be from the verb in the lower part of the sentence so this caging this construction this skeleton is very much important and you'd have to remember this to successfully cage the sentences in sentence diagramming it's so very easy there's nothing complicated in it only your approach must be right so dear students we have completed our discussion for the third part of sentence diagramming there we have handled with direct objects and indirect objects and how to cage them how to put them into sentence diagramming and also we have discussed what would happen for compound predicate for compound direct objects and for compound indirect objects so this is how you can learn step by step sentence diagramming here in shiksha mantra only if you are connected to us so you have to stay connected with shiksha mantra to get something special about english grammar and for this you have to like this channel you have to subscribe to this channel and also don't forget to press the bell icon for the fresh notifications because we are returning very soon with another part of this video and many more like this so stay glued to the channel bless us help us to provide you service more than what you need and 
with the promise that we are returning very soon with a fresh video here would like to say bye bye